hoist the sails and hold on tight. We're about to brave the dangerous waters of Roshar in search of history, lore, and maybe even some treasures in this Cosmere story. Welcome to the Pop Docs channel. My name is Joseph, one half of the Pop Docs, here with another book review in this video discussing Dawn Shard by Brandon Sanderson. This is a novella that takes place on the planet of Roshar in the midst of the Stormlight Archive series, which is one of many series within Mr. Sanderson's fictional universe that he calls the Cosmere. This is planned to be a 10-book series overall, split into two different sections. Uh, part one of the first five books, part two, the latter five books in the Stormlight Archive. So far to date, Mr. Sanderson has released four novels in the main storyline of the Stormlight Archive in part one of that main storyline, starting with The Way of Kings, moving to Words of Radiance, then to Oathbringer, then most recently to Rhythm of War. Within those main novels, there are many interludes that introduce us to new characters, new locations on the world of Roshar, in the world of Roshar. And there have been some accompanying novellas that have occurred in the midst of the first part of the Stormlight Archive, wherein Mr. Sanderson tries to expand upon some of the characters we meet primarily in those interludes, although they've started to show up in different ways in the main narrative as well, but still very much part of the supporting cast. One of those novellas is Edge Dancer, which followed the adventures of Lyft and her friend Wendell. That essentially takes place between Words of Radiance and Oathbringer. Dawn Shard, the novella I want to talk about and discuss in this particular video, moves forward a little bit in that timeline and takes place between Oathbreaker and Rhythm of War. And I want to highlight these different dynamics, this context, because although I want to keep this review and this discussion of Dawn Shard non-spoilery, it's likely to incorporate some discussion of elements from Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, Edge Dancer, and Oathbringer, because this far into a series, in this particular series, it's difficult to talk, even in very general, somewhat opaque terms, about this short story, this novella, without also talking a little bit about some of the dynamics of the world of Roshar, and the magic system, and the politics, etc., etc. So, if you have not read anything from the Stormlight Archive, please go ahead and bookmark this video if you're worried about any potential spoilers for the Stormlight Archive series and come back to this video to talk about and discuss Dawn Shard when you've gotten through those first three novels and then also Edge Dancer. Turning to Dawn Shard itself, what is this story about? And for that, I want to go straight to the edition I have in my hands here and offer to you the synopsis of the story that is on offer from this edition. When a ghost ship is discovered, its crew presumed dead, trying to reach the storm-shrouded island Akana. Navani Colin must make sure the island hasn't fallen into enemy hands. Knights Radiant who fly too near find their stormlight suddenly drained, so the expedition must be by sea. Ship owner Risen Fatori lost the use of her legs but gained the companionship of Chiri Chiri, a stormlight ingesting winged larkin. Now Risen's pet is ill, and any hope of her recovery can be found only at the ancestral home of the larkin, Akina. With the help of Lopin, the formerly one-armed windrunner, Risen must sail into the perilous storm from which no one has returned alive. If they cannot uncover the secrets of the hidden island city, before the wrath of its ancient guardians falls upon them, the fate of Roshar and the entire Cosmere hangs in the balance. Fairly lengthy synopsis uh, for this particular novella, but I think it really captures the tone, the spirit, and the ramifications 
of this particular novella, as I will get into in my next segment, my yays and my nays. The yays being what worked for me in the story, the nays being those elements that just didn't work for me as I was going through this particular story. And I will not bury the lead here. I enjoyed Don Shard. In fact, I enjoyed it more, much more than Edge Dancer. So between the two novellas in the Stormlight Archive, I would definitely rank and will rank Don Shard much higher than Edge Dancer and would be willing to revisit Dawn Shard again down the road in a reread. Whereas Edge Dancer, I'm a little more ambivalent about whether or not I would jump back into a reread of Edge Dancer in the midst of going back through the Stormlight Archive. One of the reasons why I enjoyed Dawn Shard is because I love adventure stories. I love mysterious places, in this particular case, a mysterious island, betrayals, searches for artifacts of great power. <clears throat> all those different dynamics of adventure serials, whether they're movies, whether they're television series, whether they're books, I love adventure stories for better or for worse. Thankfully, uh, my first idea here is that this is in the better category. This is a fun adventure. Much of it takes place on the seas, on the ocean. It's a very much a nautical adventure here. So certainly for readers that are thinking about picking up Don Shard, definitely know that a lot of this book takes place on a ship and is really told through this nautical theme. And ultimately now, these are two different nautical adventures within the Cosmere that I've read that Mr. Sanderson has published, Don Shard being the f one of them, Trust of the Emerald Sea being the other one. I loved Trust of the Emerald Sea. In fact, I have a review of Trust of the Emerald Sea on this channel that you can view if you're interested. But I really like the way that Mr. Sanderson writes these types of tales. And to situate them in the Cosmere, which is this fictional universe that I really enjoy visiting, following the characters that live and reside within it and act within it, the different stories and plot lines that, that take place. It was just a fusion of different storytelling elements themes, yes, tropes, that I really enjoy seeing in my stories. And so this novella felt tailor-made for my own taste in that particular way. I think where this novella really shines, certainly for me, is with the character of Ryzen. And I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any of these words and these names, these places, these titles. Uh, Ryzen's how I read um, that particular name, but I really love this particular character. She's a character that, that has shown up in the interludes in previous Stormlight Archive novels. And ever since her appearance in the novels, I've really enjoyed following her journey. Particularly the tragedy that befalls her in the midst of her journey throughout the Stormlight Archive that is referenced in the synopsis of the novella. So uh, hopefully that's, that's not a spoiler. But this novella really allows us to spend much more time with her than we normally get when she's more of a supporting character in the main novels of the Stormlight Archive. And it was really interesting seeing how she's now grappling with her new reality and how she fits into Thalen society, how she utilizes all of her skills and training in trade, bartering, mediation, negotiation, and the like. And I really enjoyed this particular character because she utilized these skills to ultimately overcome the main conflict in this particular story that I won't get into for spoiler reasons. But I loved her journey in this story. And I hope that she continues to show up in the main novels in the Stormlight Archive because I really do enjoy this character. For, for me, since she is the heart of this story, I really enjoyed reading those chapters from her point of view. And when she was the one moving the plot forward and how she not only overcame the obstacles presented to her, but also earned the respect of these sailors on this particular vessel that she now putatively owns and operates. I won't go any, into any more detail to avoid any spoilers, but one of the main highlights for me was Ryzen, was her particular journey. I also really thought the antagonists were very well done and very formidable. Uh, and so I really think a lot of these stories rise and fall with the strength and formidability of the antagonists. And there have been some times where I think the antagonists that Mr. Sanderson includes in his stories don't rise to the level needed uh, to be fearsome, to be um, 
worrisome, anxiety-inducing, and the like. Again, go back to Trust the Emerald Sea. I thought, as an example, Captain Crow wasn't really that formidable as an antagonist, at least as written. And so that was one of the nays I had in that particular story. In this story in Dawnshire, I really think the antagonists are well written. They are formidable. They're scary. They present a real challenge um, to Ryzen and the other characters in this particular story. So I thought the antagonists, in general, were a strong part of this story as well. A lot of cool cameos in this particular novella. Won't go into who they are when they show up. But I thought it was fun um, that there were some cameos of characters we've seen before in the main storyline, and they didn't feel ham-fisted uh, or forced. They were part of the narrative, and I think those are the best types of cameos is when it makes a lot of sense. And they don't ultimately overshadow, overwhelm the characters who are supposed to be the center pieces of this particular story, and they don't. I think they spent enough time on the page as they need to. It was just fun to see some of those different characters pop up in this particular novella. Finally, I think this novella sets up a lot of important dynamics for future Cosmere stories, as well as certainly future stories in the Stormlight Archive. And I really love that element of the world building. Certainly, I really enjoy Mr. Sanderson's ability to create individual worlds. But I love thinking about, talking about, discussing the Cosmere in total and the whole fictional universe that he has set up and how ultimately all these stories potentially interconnect, interweave with one another. This is one of the reasons why one of my favorite short stories in the Cosmere that Mr. Sanderson has written is Mistborn's Secret History. Uh, but I won't go into any detail for Mistborn's Secret History, certainly to avoid spoilers, but... I really enjoyed that short story in large measure because of the Cosmere connections that it depicted. And I think a similar thread can be found, particularly in the latter portion of Donshar. And so I loved that about this particular novella. Having said all that, there are some nays for me in this particular story. It's not a perfect story. Uh, most stories, if not all stories, there can always be some things tinkered with, some flaws to be found and potentially addressed. And so I certainly had some nays for this particular novella as well. One of them, and I'm a little more ambivalent about this, but I'm going to include it on my nays list, is the character of Lopin. I think Lopin works well as a supporting character in the main storyline, the main novels of the Stormlight Archive. He has a lot more page time in this particular novel. Splits it, I'd say a third to two-thirds with Ryzen. So he's a fairly substantial character in this particular novella. And he's one of these characters in Mr. Sanderson's Cosmere that I just don't gravitate towards in a lot of ways, but mainly because of the humor. The humor doesn't work for me. And so my Edge Dancer review, one of the things that I struggled with in getting through that particular novella was the humor with which Lyft acts. just doesn't work for me. Um, and so Lopin falls into the category oftentimes with Lyft, with Wayne from Mistborn Era 2, with Huck from Trust the Emerald Sea, if you've read Trust the Emerald Sea. And that type of humor over the length even of a novella starts to get on my nerves a little bit. And so Lopin very much falls in that category. And so for Lopin's chapters, I struggled to get through those. I was eagerly awaiting the next time that Ryzen would show up in a particular chapter, take over a particular chapter. Having said that, similar to my review in Edge Dancer, I ultimately did like the evolution, the arc of Lopin in this particular novella. So there were elements of Lopin's story here that I did enjoy. And they were, again, like Edge Dancer, were those more introspective moments with this particular character. And just like Edge Dancer, there would sometimes be an undermining of these moments through the introduction again, the injection of this type of humor that is associated with this particular character. So that was one of my nays. The other nay, and this is certainly something that I struggle with in particularly the rhythm of war, which is all the discussion of Fabrial science. And although I do love world building, both within the individual series on these individual planets and the larger Cosmere as well, the Fabrial science lessons I struggle with 
in the Stormlight Archive. And although there's not as much of it in Dawn Shard, I think for a variety of reasons, one being it's certainly a novella, as compared to Rhythm of War, that is an element here that for those that have read with Rhythm of War and are thinking about going back and reading Dawn Shard and had the difficulty with the Fabrial Science in Rhythm of War might have some difficulty with some parts of Dawn Shard, although I don't think that it overshadows clouds, weighs down this particular story. But it was something um, that I thought about multiple times as I was reading through some of these sections and flashing back to reading Rhythm of War and some of those chapters on Fabrial Science. I can't go too much into my final nay here because it would involve spoilers, but ultimately the way the antagonists act in the third act of this particular story, the end of this story, didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, and the way they were acting really made me think that the main characters in the story had plot armor. And so I don't think the antagonist actions in the end of the story made a whole lot of sense leading up to the ultimate confrontation between uh, Ryzen and um, several of the antagonists in the story. And so I'll leave it there but plot armor issues, I think, emerged in the latter portion of this particular story. And those, I think, diminish, at least in part, the enjoyment of the latter portion of the book. Although once the action picked up, if you will, and use action in air quotes because it's not necessarily leaping, jumping, flying, um, sparring, uh, battles uh, in terms of how this story ends. But I loved particularly Ryzen's um, conclusion to this story. So a lot of my nays are 50-50 here. There are elements that frustrated me, but also elements uh, of these nays that I really enjoyed, actually. So that leads me to my rating and recommendation for Don Shard. As I mentioned, I enjoyed this novella far more than I did Edge Dancer. And so at least within the Stormlight Archive, certainly would rate Don Shard higher than Edge Dancer. In the Pantheon of short stories and novellas, that Mr. Sanderson has written in the Cosmere, this would probably fall somewhere in the middle to upper echelon of those particular stories. Out of 10, I would give this an 8.5. I really did enjoy Don Shard for all the reasons I enumerated in my yays section. And again, I'm really hoping to see particularly Ryzen in future Stormlight Archive stories because I really did love her character a lot. I also think for certainly Cosmere fans, this is probably going to be an important novella to read if you haven't already, given the potential ramifications that could emanate from the end of this particular story for the larger Cosmere. It's also just a very quick read. So whether you're an avid fan of the Cosmere, an avid fan of the Stormlight Archive, or working your way through the Stormlight Archive, certainly don't read this in advance of The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, Edge Dancer, or Oathbringer. Not only because you likely won't really have an idea of what's going on, uh, given the importance of that history, if you will, of those first several stories in the Stormlight Archive, but it certainly would, would spoil elements of those first several. So if you've gotten to this point, particularly if you've gotten up to Oathbringer, definitely pick up Don Shard. It's a quick read, it's a fun read, and a read that's, I think, as I mentioned, going to have significant consequences for the larger Cosmere down the road. Jump in those comments below. Let me know what you thought of Don Shard. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my own views, my own thoughts and opinions on Don Shard, both as a novella, as a story, and as part of the Stormlight Archive and the larger Cosmere. If you like talking about books, uh, movies, television shows, conventions, any manifestation of popular culture, please consider joining us in future conversations about popular culture. With that, for this particular video, the Pop Docs Clinic is officially closed.